welcome to another episode of Life Heart Lesson with Zuzanna. If you're watching live, let me know if you can hear me all right, if you can see me okay. Let me know also where you're tuning in and what's the situation where you are now. Has your life changed a lot over the last couple of days and weeks or are you still coping well, well maintaining the same lifestyle? Let me know what it's like for me. Um, if you're watching that a couple months later from today, you will probably remember how uh, many challenges we were all facing around that time. Hopefully this will all be history in some time, but for now let's just do what we can. We will be tuning in through the Live Harp lessons every Friday to make sure that those of you who are spending that time with the harp have enough advice, tips and inspiration to carry on. Let me check if the live is all fine. If you can tune in and leave a comment, that would be really great. So I know if everything is fine on your side. Just to check the vision is fine. I can't see myself on the screen because I want the harp to be seen well on your side. So I just want to check if everything is fine for you. There is the live and it seems all working fine. If you want to send me any comments, please do. Uh, today's topic will be about playing hands together and how to focus on one thing at a time when you're managing both hands doing different things. But before we jump in, I just wanted to let you know a few announcements before today's live. Spring term comes to the end in my teaching studio and I will be soon taking bookings for the next time. Live carries on as usual. The lessons will be probably mostly taught online over the summer term, but um, that will also depend how the situation will evolve. will evolve. If you want to sign up, if you're interested for the lessons, if you want to hear when bookings will open, if you want to know about trial lessons and everything around the course, sign up through the link. It's the same link in the description of that Facebook Live and it will be posted also on the page of the live. Second announcement, there is a free PDF for this lesson as for all other lessons and you will make the most of that lesson, that session today when you're following all the examples on the PDF. So we've got still a couple of minutes to go through the link, click and sign up to download. You should get your password and link immediately so you'll still be able to follow today's lessons. If you're not watching live, if you're watching the replay, stop that video go to the link, sign up and get your PDF because that will give you much, much more detailed information about what we're working on today. So, on to today's topic. Hello, Lisa. Glad to see that you made it. <laughs> um, I think it's always a bit confusing when you're tuning in from a different time zone. We're always on at 11 a.m., but I know that there are some um, time changes coming up soon with uh, winter time coming to the end and so on. So I'm always happy when those of you who can make it uh, to the live lesson. So about today's topic, I wonder how many of you know this book? How many of you had anything to do with that book? If you've been watching my life lessons for a while, you have probably seen me using that one quite a few times. And just to be clear, it's an excellent book if you're studying with a teacher and if you know at least the basics of reading the music. However, many people, when they first start their journey with the harp, find this book because it's one of the few hard books which comes up on Amazon and a few other pages and they think that first hard book means that this is everything you need to know to learn to play the harp and as the author herself says this is not a method this is a graded material which can be used with any teacher and then if you don't do that if you assume that this book is a method that will guide you through the harp while learning on your own. You might be quite frustrated when you go to the third page and you find alphabet song that we will be talking about today and you find how difficult it is actually to get to play that song hands together. I will play that song for you just in case some of you don't know what I'm talking about. This is also the tune that you may know as Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. I'm sure you will all recognize it the moment I play. This is Alphabet Song in Betty Parrott's arrangement.
know the melody, but I don't know if many of you are familiar or can hear clearly enough what the left hand is doing here. Left hand is going... Which is quite different from the melody that you hear in the right hand. That's one difficulty. Another one is the fact that you're only using your index fingers, so each hand uses only one of the fingers. And while that might seem that uh, an ad like an advantage to this piece, making it easier, it actually makes things a bit more difficult because every time you pluck a string, you come off from the harp and you have to decide where are you going to go next. Are you going to go back to the same string? Are you to go? Are you going to go elsewhere? And where? Up, down, how far? And especially if the fingers are doing different things, for example, at the beginning, both hands go up, but right hand goes five strings up, while left hand only jumps two strings up. You're going to find yourself in trouble if you don't know exactly what you're doing and if you're trying to do too much at the same time. Following the topic of the last lesson, patterns, I'm going to go with you very quickly over what patterns can we see in this in this piece, finding my notes for the lesson my PDF. Uh, if you're looking at the rhythm, if you're following the guidelines from last lesson, you will see that it's the same rhythm throughout the piece, the same rhythmic pattern, six crotchets or six quavers and the minim or half note repeat six times throughout the piece and that can be quite confusing because it's not the same melody. But then when you look a bit closely about the left hand, on the left hand rhythm, you will see in the middle part, left hand follows the same rhythm as the right hand as opposed to doing uh, minims later. So middle part is that one. again the steps from the last lesson from the live lesson 40 and ignore the repeated notes at first and then connect the dots you will see that that pattern repeats twice within the second line and then you can determine that if that middle line is different than the other ones then it might be worth checking if the first and last line the first and third line are any similar because lots of pieces follow that musical form of a, B, A, so one kind of pattern, different pattern, and same pattern as at the beginning. And when you look at the beginning and the end of that piece, you will see that this is exactly what happens. The first section, first eight bars, are exactly the same as the last eight bars. And that means that you're only learning uh, four bars, not eight, when it comes to the middle section and only eight bars out of 16 when it comes to uh, first section and the end. So in total, that saves you learning eight bars in the whole piece. That's good news, isn't it? Let's move on now to the ways of managing playing hands together and focusing at one thing at a time. So there are basically two methods that I will be going to talk about in today's lesson. The first method will work really well when one of your hands has a bit more time to move around than the other. So when you're looking at the first line of this piece, you will see that the right hand is playing fewer notes than the left hand. Right hand repeats two notes, while left hand plays only one at that time. So I would suggest that when you're facing some waiting time for the left hand, you move it as soon as you can to the next note. If you'll be looking at the PDF from this lesson, you will see tiny dots marked on the string that needs to be played next. So I recommend that as soon after you play the first group of notes together, you move your left hand to the next string and you wait with your right hand. You don't let your right hand play that repeated note until your left hand is on. Then you can take a moment to check if your left hand is already sitting on that next note, if your right hand is ready to repeat the second note because then you only have to play the right hand, find the way for your right hand, and your left hand is already there. So only paying attention to one hand at a time, yeah? Let me show you that again. So you're starting with both hands on the first note, both play C, right hand middle C, left hand lower C. You can already look ahead to where your left hand will be going. That will be that E. You play that first group of notes, hands together. Right hand goes back to the same string, left hand moves up. Right hand repeats, goes up, they play together. 
and you can repeat that all the way throughout that first line which you already know is the same as the last line and I've put the dots in the music for your convenience so when you're learning that with the PDF you will see very clear where is the next step for you to go ideally you always want to look ahead ahead but I know it's very tricky when you've got that psychological barrier of a bar line so that's why I put those dots there to make it a bit easier for yourself the second method for managing playing hands together when they are both playing at the same time, which is what happens in the second line. In the second line you've got both hands playing the same number of notes, the same rhythm. So you can very clearly see that they both have the exact same amount of time to move. You can't move one in advance and then wait for the other. The nice thing about that section is that both hands move in steps for the first three bars. The only complications arise when you arrive to bar 4 and to be precise when you're moving from bar 3 to 4 and then from 4 to 5 when you're going back to the repeated pattern. When you look at the PDF you will see the lines that I've put in the music to show you how the pattern is changing and in which direction both hands will be going. You will also see the first bit where you need to start paying attention put in a box, in a frame to alert you to what happens later. So the method to manage that area, that section, is start from the notes in the box that will be E for the right hand, C for the left hand, that's the last step that I have made, and now right hand will be continuing with a step going to D, so going from E to D, but left hand will be going from C to G. So they will not only go in the opposite directions, they will start going closer towards one another, but also left hand will jump much further than the right hand. So the way to practice that is start again from your left hand on C, right hand on E, the notes in the orange box, then without playing move your right hand a few times to the next string, from E to D, just to feel the distance, put your right hand back on E, now let your left hand feel how far is it, and how is it moving, where is it going, up or down, how many strings is it jumping. Put them both back on, on the same string, C and E, and now move both hands at the same time, still without playing. So E from the right hand moves one step down, left hand jumps up. Try to feel how your hands are moving in space, and finally put them back, and now play. So, uh, sorry, the notes in the orange box are just one note, so that will be just that, and then this. But if you feel better, you can go back and repeat them, and then move. Then repeat the same exercise with the next set of notes. You will see the lines guiding you to the next set of notes from D and G. You will need to repeat the same exercise moving to the next notes, where the repeated pattern starts again. Yeah? So you're following first the two notes from the box, following the lines to D and G, and then from D and G do exact same version of that exercise going to G and E, repeating the same steps just with different notes. That's everything for today. I hope this was helpful and I hope you're managing well uh, this difficult time. The last message I wanted to tell you, especially those of you who are starting to learn to play the harp and are maybe finding pieces like that frustrating, be kind to yourself. And don't worry if it takes more time than you initially thought. The mindful practice like the one that I've shown here may take a bit of time and may be quite challenging to keep your focus at all times, but it will pay off very soon. And when you're a beginner, it's quite hard to say what pieces are easy and what pieces are difficult. That's why books like that are really designed to work with the teacher. But if you're following those guidelines and try to find a way to think about just one thing at a time, stopping, assessing, moving on, then you will very soon move forward. And last but not least, if you are interested in learning harp with a teacher, I will be opening an enrollment for the next term of harp lessons very soon. So use the link in the description of this Facebook Live to sign up and hear more in due course. I hope you are very well and I'm looking forward to seeing you next week, same time. Take care. Bye.